Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Mary Dar Derbyshire, an Alexander Technique teacher in Little Compton, Rhode Island. That's uh, not all that far from Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, we're going to talk today about Mary's work with seniors and some considerations that Alexander t teachers might want to take into account with their older students. Mary, welcome to the show. Hi, Robert. Thank you for having me. Oh, hi. Good to talk to you. This is actually our, our second conversation of today. Um, Mary, what, what's, what are some important things for an Alexander teacher to know when they have a student who's in their 70s or 80s, possibly using a cane or a walker, that sort of thing? What are some important things for them to know? Well, I think patience is a very strong virtue as far as working with older people. Um, their ability to move, um, to, to even stand out of a chair can be very limited. Um, you have to have a lot of imagination in so far as uh, uh, creating a, a, a space that they can move in. They may not be able to lie down on your table, for instance, mm -hmm. or your table may be bit because getting onto the table is always challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I use a lot of different props with my chair um, to make my the seat of my chair higher or softer. Um, so those, those are the things that kind of pop mm -hmm. into my mind just now. Mm -hmm. And when you say uh, patience, I mean, uh, honestly, uh, I think most Alexander teachers um, if they've been teaching any length of time, have learned to be patient with everybody. But, but, um, but, but, but there's uh, there are obviously some special uh, considerations when you're working with older people. So there may be certain activities you can't work with, and as you say, maybe table work is not going to be a possibility. Right, or the con or the way that you conventionally do table work. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what what would be an unconventional way of doing table work? Just to, well, having the table lower, so there. Having, is, yeah. Yeah, having the table lower, um, putting people on their side, um, using pillows. Oh, pillows I see. Pillows on top of books, um, just. Uh, so you would work with students lying on their side on a table then. Yes, I oftentimes do that. Yes. I see. Oh, okay. I've never done that. That's interesting. Um, and, and because it just it isn't possible for them to lie on their back comfortably? Or, yes, or getting up off the table from, from a oh, semi-supine oh, can be very right. difficult. Mm -hmm. Initially, yeah. initially. This is, I find, though, that after a few lessons that typically they're able to, you know, as their range of, of motion increases and their confidence level increases, that you're able to do more and more. Mm -hmm. And and would you substitute um, w working with them sitting and doing kind of table work stuff while they're sitting perhaps a little more at the beginning? Yes. Yeah. Right. Or, and, and, and oftentimes not having so much emphasis of sitting to standing or just sitting. Right. The emphasis being just sitting. Right. Right. Okay. Um, what do you find in terms of uh, their ability to take in the ideas and run with them? I have found are very eager to learn the principles of the technique. I've, I've never had any problem with someone comprehending um, what the work is about. If anything, they just they just gobble it up. They're so for so long they believe that their their situation is just one of decline mm -hmm. and that that there is no hope that they're never going to walk without that walker again or walk without that cane again but when you show them that this is possible it just is it just completely opens up so much more possibility for them mhm mm so in, i guess in a way um there's more at stake for them really than it might be for a younger person. Well, um, I, 
Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I've thought a lot about this. Um, what's the difference in working with much older people versus the age range that I worked with when I was when I had a practice in Dublin, Ireland, or when I was in Chicago? And um, it's it's just very rewarding to be working with people who who felt that there was that everything was just coming to an end, and that you're actually giving them a new a, a whole new um, period of their lives. Mm-hmm. And of course, they have more time typically to work on their own. Yes, they do. They so, do. And do you like when someone comes to you at what uh, at what point in the lesson sequence would you give them some homework assignments? Well, I give them. I will have them do lie downs in their bed. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and, and you know, it's not the best thing. You know, it's not like lying down on the floor or lying down on a table. But they can do it. They can lie down in their bed. And they can get something out of that. Absolutely. And, and how about um, when do you start giving them some things to work on mentally, some Alexandria directions, for example? And, oh, immediately, after the first... Oh, okay. Me too. I do that That's, with pretty much you know, everyone. And you find that you can that works okay with older people. Absolutely. Yeah, they're 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 eager to learn and certainly the people that I see, they are um you know, they're they're avid readers, they're avid churchgoers, they're avid um you, you know, they're interesting people. So, learning something new is something that they they really want. Mhm. And it's I guess it's learning something new that does not require them to necessarily engage in any r- rigorous exercise that they right. wouldn't be right. able to do in many cases. Right. It's, it's it's totally adaptable to a fairly um not let's say sedentary lifestyle, but a lifestyle that doesn't have a huge amount of external activity. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. One thing that I do do with my older students is that I will take them through a range of motion, um, because once they start to get the freedom in their in their in their limbs, for instance, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or in their or in their their head and their neck, mm-hmm. the ability to turn their head from side to side, which a lot of them lose that ability. Right. right. And. Um, so to, I take them through this range of motion to show them that they that it, 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 if they think of their directions that they can move through space because they they become so accustomed not being able to move through space they mm-hmm. become so accustomed to just kind of you know shuffling through their homes right and so for example with their arms you would you would uh, sort of take over the movement of their arms a bit to show them what's possible, that kind of thing? Exactly. And exactly. and um, I would imagine that it happens uh, fairly often that they're kind of amazed at what is possible. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. They are. If they've, they are. If, they've, if they've been kind of crunching into them, themselves for a long time and do you um have you used uh uh, body mapping ideas with them i do use some body mapping i do and Mm -hmm. um and that of course you know that reorients one to you know to think about themselves differently and uh, and of course that changes the way you move as we all know Mm -hmm. so um yes i do do that Mm -hmm. i do do that right so, uh, anything else you'd like to say to Alexander teachers who perhaps, whether they're experienced teachers or not, just haven't had a lot of experience working with older people? Any any additional advice or suggestions? I I think that the older population is one that we have not tapped into as a profession. And I think that... There are so many people out there. I mean, we're all getting older, right? mm-hmm. you know, and there's just so many people out there who could be helped by our work. And I don't think we should be shy about it. Um, I tell, you know, I, I think the title of my workshop 
at the ACGM is the fountain of youth. I really believe that the Alexander technique is the fountain of youth. And I tell my older students that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they regain years. And if they've had an episode, if they've fallen, if they're, you know, they're, they're onto a walker or they've, they've, they're, they have Parkinson's and it's progressing, the technique just gives them so much freedom and gives them, you know, the ability to address their issues. Mm -hmm. And how do you, um, I hate to use the word marketing, but how, how do you reach the seniors in your area? You, you live well, in an area where there are a lot of retirees, right? Yes, uh, you're yes. You're in a small, a small town. Are you on the coast of Rhode Island? Or? Yes. So yes, there are I'm a lot a, of people. I'm on a little who, peninsula. Okay, huh? so, so there yeah. there are a lot of retired people in your area. Um, right. How how do you get your students? Uh, I've been so lucky. Mostly word of mouth, of course, but um, is I'm involved in the community and I give. Uh, workshops at a local wellness center mm -hmm. um, and I uh, and because it's such a small community I think you know people talk um, we have you know it's very social in that way so um, I think I've, I I don't do a lot of marketing Robert mm -hmm. Well, you got a website. I have a website. I have a website. <laughs> yes, and I send people to my website. Right. But but you're in a city. Maybe that's something else to be said about seniors is that they uh, they themselves are perhaps maybe more likely to refer, refer you to someone else they know. Well, could be. And I've also been – I think that's true. And I've also been invited into – there's a – like a local men's luncheon club that gets together once a week, and I've gone in there a couple of times, and they've and given presentations, and um, mm -hmm. so yeah, they they but they network for me. They definitely right. do. They in, I I get invited to these places. So, and um, when you give a presentation, for example, at that club, mm -hmm. is it mm -hmm. you talking, or do you and or do you demonstrate with somebody? How do you do that? Um, well, I had a PowerPoint. And so I used a lot of pictures, mm -hmm. and then I did some just very basic things of asking on their systems and do a little whispered awe mm -hmm. and see how they, you know, how, how do they feel afterwards. Um, so, and that, that luncheon group, those gentlemen are very old. I mean, some of them are well into their 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the oldest student you've ever had? I, I'm sorry. I, oh, I, what's you the just broke up. what's the oldest student you've ever had? I think ninety-four. Well, wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, is there anything else you'd like to say before we come to an end? Uh, no, I just appreciate your asking to talk to me. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, and uh, I'll, we're we're speaking in early in um, March of 2014, this summer in June at the uh, AMSAT AGM. Uh, Mary's going to be teaching a class on working with seniors. So if you're coming to the AGM, you might want to sign up for that. Um, so my guest today has been Mary uh, Derbyshire, an Alexander Technique teacher in Little Compton. Rhode Island. Mary, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Robert.